Kristen Oviedo, and this is instantaneous speed. So when we talk about speed, uh, the units of measurement are always a distance traveled over a time elapsed, so miles per hour, uh, the most common unit of speed in the US. And when we talk about that hour, that's a time elapsed, that's not a single time. So if we say that we traveled 60 miles between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock, well, we just subtract the time that we got there and the time that we left, and we get one hour, and that is our time elapsed. But we run into a problem when we talk about instantaneous speed, because instantaneous implies that there is no time elapsed, and it's a single instant in time. And so we kind of run into a problem, because that implies that we would actually be dividing by zero if there's no time elapsed. And as you all know, you can't divide by zero because then the universe will explode. You don't want that to happen. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sneak up on that zero at the bottom of this equation. And I've written a little example right here. So what I've done is I've made a chart and I've recorded my attempts to calculate speed over a shorter and shorter time period. So the first time period, the time elapsed was 10 seconds, and I did my calculation, and my speed was 52 miles per hour, or whatever units you want. And then I did it again, but this time with only five seconds, and I got 56, and so on and so forth. And I waited to fill in these last few, but notice that my seconds are changing uh, at a smaller and smaller rate. And so correspondingly, my calculated speeds are going to start to converge. So when you look at all of the calculated speeds as we've been sneaking up on this zero over here, you can see pretty clearly that they're starting to get really, really close to 60. And I know that if I kept doing this forever, I would get 59.9999999, and I've never actually hit 60. But using calculus, we can prove that if I actually could divide by zero, then in this particular problem, I would actually get 60 as my instantaneous speed. So this method of kind of sneaking up on this number that you're not supposed to divide by, but you're kind of trying to, is crucial in calculus. And this is especially crucial to differential calculus. So this is actually one of the first things you learn if you take a beginning calculus course and it's used all throughout science, especially in physics, but in pretty much every major branch of science. And so it's very, very useful to know. And the full derivation and a talk about derivatives and uh, calculus and all of that are kind of beyond our scope. But for our purposes here, we can say that our instantaneous speeds will converge with this method. I'm Kristen Oviedo, and that is instantaneous speed.